Hi everyone, my name is Julian Skrzypek and this is my statistics course. As you can see, I am in a fighting mood, so I am ready for a battle with statistics. The first skirmish is the fight against classical measures of position. At the beginning, I should explain what are the measures of position. Measures of position indicate where is the best value that could represent all values of the variable. Let's imagine the following situation. We have a number axis. We consider a variable y, yes, a simple variable y, and now we put some values on it. For example, our variable y takes the following values 8, 12, 9, for example. So now we are looking for the best value that could represent all these values of our variable. Because uh, at the moment our considerations are heterogeneous, yes? We don't have any synthetic measure that could represent all the values of the attribute. The solution is Let's compute mean value of our uh, attribute, our variable. Yeah? So, we take calculator 9 plus 8 plus 12, it's 29 divided by 3, and the result is mean value of y is about 9.667. And this is a this is a measure of position. So one value it's a representation of all the values of attribute. It indicates a, a, an average, a typical level of our attribute. And it's synthetic, it's homogeneous. Yes, we have one synthetic measure that uh, represent all the values of our variable. So for statisticians, the information about an average typical value of the phenomenon is very important, yes, because it's a base for the comparison, yeah, between many different populations. Here we have y, uh, y um, variable and we can take another uh, variable, maybe x and its values are for example uh, 8 um, maybe 6 and 5 yeah and we see that the typical average level of x variable uh, values are 5 plus 6 plus 8 divided by 3 and its typical level, average level is 6.33 it's about 6.33 so we see that the average typical level of y and x are different and x has lower typical average level of its values. Yes, we can compare these two synthetic values. We can't compare um, value by value of these uh, variables. Yes, we, uh, we need a synthetic measure that can be compared between different uh, variables and dif 
or different populations. Measures of position can be divided into two basic groups, classical ones and non-classical ones. At the beginning, uh, we will discuss classical measures of position and arithmetic mean goes first. Arithmetic mean, or simply mean, is the basic well-known measure of position. Uh, we, the, notation, the notation of arithmetic mean is X symbol with a dash, yeah, horizontal line above uh, uh, X, and uh, um, mean is a kind of ratio. Ratio between what? Between sum of all values of considered uh, variable divided by the count of numbers, count of values used in a statistical service. Yeah? So we sum, uh, we sum up all the values uh, and divide the sum by the number of these values. Of course, we know all values of considered variable. This formula uh, has its use or in uh, other words we can use this formula in individual uh, statistical series, especially in the individual statistical series, cross-sectional series and time series. In time series we use arithmetic mean if we want to express the average level of considered variable in time. So, we now we can um, discuss the properties of mean, simply mean. The unit of mean is the same as the variable unit, yeah? So let's imagine following situation. We consider variable, a variable x, which is, for example, uh, housing spendings. Which are housing spendings. Yeah? Housing spendings can be expressed in dollars, for example. Yeah? So, the sum of all values expressed in dollars, yeah, for sure will be expressed in dollars, yeah? One dollar plus sixty dollars plus three hundred dollars, yes, the sum for sure will be expressed in the same unit, in dollars, yeah? So, if we divide dollars by the unknown number, but a natural number, yeah, n, for sure, the unit of the unit of arithmetic mean will be the same as the the unit of our variable. Mean is computable for the values of all measurable variables. Yeah. So if our variable has discrete or continuous character mean is always computable we can compute mean mean the third property 
mean is not lower than the lowest value or minimum value of examined variable and not higher, not greater than the highest. The highest, it means maximum. Maximum value of examined variable. It's logic, yes? So if we, for example, have uh, individual series like that, 4, 5, uh, 8, 12, for sure, arithmetic mean is somewhere between 4 and 12, including 4 and 12, yeah? Is somewhere between these two values. Yeah, we can compute it and we know uh, at this moment we are sure that mean is somewhere between these two values. The proof of that is very simple. Let's imagine that we know all uh, we know all the values of attribute of variable x. Yeah, so in an individual series, yes, you know, ordered statistical material in non ascending or non descending way, ascending or non descending way. We know all the values of our attribute. The values are ordered. For example, in non-descending way. Yeah. So it means x1 is a minimum value. Yeah. Because this, this material is ordered at the moment. Yeah. Here we have minimum value from minimum to maximum, yes, so xn is our maximum value. So we know that x1 will be not higher than um, maximum and not lower than minimum value, yeah, first value is not lower than minimum value and not higher than maximum value. We also know that the second value, x2, has the same property. And so on, the last value the last value is not lower than the minimum value and not higher, not greater than the maximum value, as I, as I said before. Yes, so we can sum up vertically um, this uh, 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 left side of inequality. Of inequality the center of inequality and the right side of inequality. So we have here n elements, yes, because I, I assumed that I know n values of our variable, yes, so n multiplied by x mean, yeah, x mean plus x mean plus x mean blah 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 up to the last x mean yeah we have n x means is not low is not um, higher than the sum from i equal one up to n of xi yes x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on up to xn this is the sum from i equal one up to n of xi is not greater than n x max yeah and now i divide all 
the sides of this in inequality by n. And what we have x min is not a greater than the sum from i equal 1 up to n of xi divided by n and this, this, uh, this phrase is not greater than x max. What is it? Of course, this is from the definition uh, from the previous side. This is x min. Next properties. Fourth, the sum of deviations of the variable values from the mean is always equal zero. Dear students, why? As you can see, the sum from i equal one up to n of the deviations between uh, variables uh, values and uh, variable values and arithmetic mean deviation yes deviation from mean is the sum this sum is always equal zero how to prove that it's very simple as you know arithmetic mean is the sum from i equal one up to n uh, of xi divided by n and we can transform uh, this formula in that way so I multiply uh, right and left and left side by n and I will receive n uh, min x is equal the sum from i equal 1 up to n of x i and then I can expand this operator. This is the sum from i equal 1 up to n from of xi minus the sum from i equal 1 up to n of x min. Yeah? It, this is a consequence of the property of the operator of the sum. And what we have here? We know that we know that this phrase yeah equals to n multiplied by mean x so this is n x mean here i'm summing up n times mean x yeah so mean x plus mean x plus blah 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 mean x and i have how many phrases of x n so n x mean minus n x mean equals zero yeah so remember that feature that the sum of deviations of the variable values from mean is always equal zero and the next feature of arithmetic mean if all values of variable y are linear function of x yeah so um, y is a function of x and we know uh, this function has linear form yeah so for each of i from 1 to up to n the values of variable y is a linear function of attribute of variable x yes and then then what mean y equals to a plus b parameter multiplied by x mean yeah 
So, once again, if all values of y are in our function of x, yeah, in this way, then the average uh, value of variable y is a linear function uh, of an average value of variable x. Yeah, and we have to know these two parameters, a and b, yeah? A is, uh, is re responsible for the position of the straight, yeah? And B is responsible for the slope of the straight. We know that from the prime high school, yeah? Um, okay. And uh, uh, I want to present a small example of this feature. Let's start with the proof of that feature. Um, we assume that this symbol we can read as for each of i, for each of i equal, equals 1, 2, 3, and so on up to n, we have this kind of relationship between y values and x values yeah for each of i starts with one yeah so for i equal one we have y1 equals a plus b x one yeah yeah if we take i equal 2, we have y2 equals a plus b x2, yeah? And if we take i equal n, we have y n plus, uh, sorry, y n uh, equals a plus b x n, yeah? So we have n rows, yes, of n equations, we can sum up left side and the right side of the equation and what we have? y1 plus y2 and so on, this is the sum from i equal 1 up to n of y i, y i i, and now we have what? n number of a so n multiplied by a plus what we have b x i plus b x 2 plus blah 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 b x n yeah so it means that we have what b x 1 plus x 2 plus x n and this equals b multiplied by the sum from i equal 1 up to n of x i yeah b the sum from i equal 1 up to n of x i yeah and now i will divide the both sides of this kind of equation by n and I will receive the sum from i equal 1 up to n of yi divided by n here uh, only a remains yes a plus b and here we have i equal 1 up to n of xi divided by n. And finally, what do we have? We have y mean, yes, because it's mean. We sum up all the values of attribute y and divide these values by n. a plus b 
and here we have uh, consequently uh, mean x. How to use this feature in practice? Here comes very simple example uh, based on the temperature conversion equation you know we Europeans measure temperature in Celsius scale for example Americans uh, measure their temperature in Fahrenheit scale yeah there is a uh, linear um, uh, relationship between Fahrenheit and Celsius scale if we consider X as a Celsius tempera tempera temperature and Y uh, Fahrenheit temperature we know that temperature in Fahrenheit scale equals 32 plus 9 fifths uh, multiplied by X I the temperature in Celsius scale yes so we take for example temperature in Celsius scale here multiplied this temperature by 9 fifths and we add 32 and we will receive the temperature in Fahrenheit scale and a um, few words about our task so I have the uh, I have recorded uh, the temperature in four uh, next days, yes, in Celsius scale. In Celsius scale, the results uh, were following maximum daily temperature 17, 15, 16, and 12. Yes, the task is to uh, obtain average temperature in, uh, in Fahrenheit scale, yeah? So what should I do? Um, the first question is Is it necessary to transform every temperature in Celsius scale into a Fahrenheit scale? The answer is no, it's not necessary It's not necessary Why? Because we want to utilize this feature mean temperature in Fahrenheit scale equals to A plus B mean temperature in Celsius scale yeah in particular Y mean Y equals to 32 plus 9 divided by 5 X mean yeah so we want to we want to utilize this feature because we know that there is a linear relationship between these two variables temperature in Celsius scale and temperature in Fahrenheit scale so let's check it out yeah so we need the sum of the, these temperatures 17 plus 15 plus 16 plus 12 we have 16 yeah and 60 uh, divided by 4 gives us 15 yeah so 15 degrees above zero in Celsius scale this is the mean temperature of uh, measured in Celsius scale in four next days okay so as I said before I don't have to transform every observation of the temperature uh, in the table I will use directly uh, this feature yeah my uh, formula transformation formula uh, and the feature of uh, arithmetic mean so mean temperature in Fahrenheit scale will be 32 plus 9 fifths multiplied by 15 yeah and we have what here we have oh sorry one here we have three and this is what nine multiplied by three is 27 yes we have 32 plus 27 and the final result will is 50 
9 degrees above zero in Fahrenheit scale. Yes, the result is obtained directly. Yes, and I didn't have to transform x values into y values. Of course, you can check it out if you don't believe me. On the basis on the previous information, we can answer this question. When all values of a variable are equal to a mean, the answer is when all the values of our variable are the same. Yeah? Yeah. Very pretty squares, aren't they? All right, we know how to compute mean in uh, individual series, cross-sectional series, and time series, don't we? Now, it's time for frequency distribution say, series, both interval statistical series and related to point statistical series. Yes, we know this division. And as you know, in the frequency distribution series, we can meet two categories. Frequencies, NIs, and relative frequencies, FI. So we have two types of formulas and the type of the formula depends on the category that uh, was used. Yeah? Frequency and I or relative frequency. But the truth is following. We know that these types of formula of formula for mean is a consequence of transforming the previous ones yeah so we can transform this formula into this formula because we know fi's are ni's divided by n of course for each of i equal one up to k yeah so we can obtain this formula on the basis on these formulas. So, how to compute arithmetic mean if we work with frequencies and we, uh, we um, have interval series? First step is to compute the products. The products of what? The products of the middle of the classes, yeah, multiplied by frequencies. So we uh, create another column in which we will multiply middle of the product by uh, middle of the class by um, uh, frequencies, yeah? And after that, we sum up the product. This is the sum of the products, yeah? We sum up various products and divide the sum by n. If we, are, if we have related to point statistical series, you know, it's typical for discrete variables when, uh, uh, where we have a limited set of values like grade from the cars yes two three three point half and a half four and so on yes we have a limited set of values so um here we uh, also have a product by 
but here we have the product of uh, the value of our variable multiplied by um, adec adequately yeah corresponding to this value uh, frequency yeah and after that we su sum up all the products of uh, statistical variable and uh, frequency and divide the sum by n Using our relative frequency is uh, a little bit simpler because we don't have to divide anything, yeah? It's enough to compute the product of, in interval series, of the middle of the classes and relative frequencies, yeah? Sum up these products and, and this is all, yeah? And we will receive arithmetic mean. The same thing in related to point series, yes, which are uh, which are dedicated to discrete uh, discrete variables. Interval series are dedicated to continuous variables, of course. And uh, as you can see in this formula, we what uh, we multiply the values of our variable by the uh, corresponding to them frequencies uh, from the same uh, class yeah and after that we sum up all the products and we will receive arithmetic mean so in this kind of reasoning uh, ni's and fi's represents uh, weights, yes, so we can treat uh, this kind of measure as weighted tree, uh, weighted mean. So it means that um, the middle of the classes, the middle of the classes, or values of our variable are weighted, yes, are weighted by, are weighted by. Uh, frequencies or relative frequencies yeah please imagine um, following example that shows uh, the main idea of the weighted mean here on the whiteboard we have a weighting scale built of the students, for example, of business and finance management. Yeah, we have two groups of students. First, groups of students, which counts three persons, are characterized by the final grade from statistics course equal to four. The second group. Also, we have three persons here, are characterized by the final grade from statistics scores equal to five. Yeah? So, in the previous terms, frequencies are following N1 equal three and N2 equal three because we have equal groups. And the feature, the variable is grade fr final grade from statistics scores uh, the value uh, of x1 is 4, the value of x2 that characterizes the second group is 5. Of course, we assume that the weight of each of students of each of student is the same, yes, because we are only interested in their uh, final grade, yeah? We don't care about their uh, weights, yes, if they are uh, fat or not. Alright, so as you can see, a balance point is placed here in the place of 4.5 because here we have at the edge 4, here we have at the edge 5. So, uh, in order to ensure a balance system, yes, we should put a finger here, yes? 
in the place of 4.5. So in that point, our system is balanced. Yeah. So we can also compute that point, yes, using an average uh, uh, mean, yes, from the previous slide. So mean here is the sum from i equal 1 up to k. We have two groups, so up to 2. xi multiplied by ni, the weights, yes. Here we have the weights. The weights are equal here divided by n, yeah? So, x1 by n1, so first value of our attribute by the uh, first frequency is 4 by 3 plus, here we have what? x2 by n2, yeah? Once again, maybe it's not clear for you, x, it means x, in the first step, x1 multiplied by n1 plus x in the uh, last step, x2 multiplied by n2 divided by n. And what we have? 4 by 3 multiplied by x2. 5 by n2, 3. Second group counts 3 persons, so it means that the second frequency is 3 divided by, 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 by 6. 6 is the sum of weights, is the population size in the statistical terms. And we have what? 12 plus 15 divided by 6 is 27, divided by 6 is for sure 4.4 4. and a half. All right, that's clear, yeah? But imagine what will happen if I change my decision. So we assume now that I have checked um, uh, works again and I decided to give one person, maybe this one, a higher grade. I changed uh, the grade of this of, this, pers of this, per this person, sorry, uh, from 4 to 5, yeah? So this person changed the group. And now is very successfully, yes, this person, because this person has 5. Okay, and how about our weighted mean? Now, our system is unbalanced, yes? Because here we have higher weights, so now the students of group 2 are going down, yeah? So what should I do with a balance point in order to ensure balanced system. Of course, I should move a balance point to the right side, yes, for example, maybe here, and that and that step that action ensure me the balance of my system, yeah? So let's compute once again, once again weighted mean. So now group two, uh, one counts two people, group, uh, group two counts four people, yeah? And the weighted mean is is 4 by 2 plus, four, uh, plus 5 by 4 divided by 6. And we have what? 8 plus 12, uh, 20 divided by 6. 28 divided by 6 gives us, gives us 28 divided by uh, 6. 
4.667 yeah so average weighted mean change its position it uh, moved to the right side from position 4.5 into the position of 4.667 and now and now my system is balanced yeah so the main conclusion we have different values but we have also different weights yes so higher higher weight means that the mean level of our variable is pulled by this value yes to its side so here five pulled uh, the average to uh, to its side yes this average is closer to five than to four this is the main acquaintance idea of weighted mean dear students it's time for a real example based on our real data so let's start chief sanitary inspectorate of poland published data on the percentage of age groups in the total number of deaths due to covid 19 and here we have an appropriate table which contains several age groups so age is considered variable and here we see another column with pers percent of total deaths uh, uh, hence in uh, each of the cell we see the information about what for example 33 percent means that 33 percent of the total deaths or 30 three percent of the people who died due to COVID-19 was aged from 70 to 79 years yeah the percentage of total deaths all the victims yes so this is the highest share yeah in the total number of victims of total number of COVID-19 victims and on the basis on real statistics and knowing that the youngest victim of the virus was 32 it's very important to mention and the oldest was 98 this is also very important information to us estimate and interpret the average age of COVID-19 victim the data is a little bit, a little bit updated, uh, outdated, because um, it um, comes from uh, 14 April 2020. But in my opinion, uh, the general trend uh, in average uh, age of a COVID victim is quite stable. Yeah so um what um can we re uh, read else from the table as you can see three first uh, age groups here are characterized by zero percent of total deaths yes so it means that there is no victim uh, age from 0 to 29 years in Poland at that moment of time yeah so we can start our consideration from 
fourth interval yeah because here we have zeros so there it's I, I don't see here any useful information so we can start our considerations from fourth uh, interval and also we can utilize this information the youngest victim of the virus was 32 so we can start our considerations we can uh, assume that the uh, done uh, that the first in the first interval uh, lower band of the class will be 32 here we have a problematic information 90 and more because in uh, that form in that state we can't uh, compute the middle of the class as you know the middle of the class is needed in mean computation yeah so what we can do here utilize this information the oldest uh, victim was 98 so uh, instead of no and more we have here 98 and finally finally um, through this kind of adjustments we receive this kind of table yeah here we have fi's yeah the percentage of total deaths yeah and of course we start our considerations from uh, fourth um, uh, interval and Let's start computing mean value, mean age of COVID victim in Poland. So, mean here, as you can see here we have relative frequencies, so we should use an appropriate formula. So, here we have interval series and relative frequencies, so the formula for mean will be the sum from i equal 1 up to k of the middle of the classes multiplied by relative frequencies. Yeah, this is our formula. k here number of classes one two three four five six seven we have seven classes all right so we can start our computations uh, what um, do we uh, what, what we need here the middle of the class yeah so in each of the class we should compute a middle point a middle of the class so in the first class we have what 32 plus 39 divided by 2 yeah so this is a, a mean between the lower and upper band of the class yeah and the result is 35.5 and the next one 40 plus 49 divided by 2 and we have 44.5 and so on yes finally we will receive and we will approach uh, the end of the table and the last, the, the last middle of the class is 94. Yes, 90 plus 98 divided by 2. Okay. In the next step, yes, this, is, this, was, this was first step. First command, please compute the middle of the classes. Now the next step is please compute these products. 
Yeah. So now we are going outside the formula from the inside to the outside. Uh, now we uh, are going to compute the products of the middle of the classes and uh, and uh, relative frequencies. Yes. So we have to build another column. The middle of the classes multiplied by relative frequencies. So in this column we multiply multiply both values from the previous column. So here we have 35.5 multiplied by 0.027 yeah and please take your calculators and compute with me so um, the result the final re result will be um, approximately 0 0.959 yeah and so on. In the next step, 44.5 multiplied by corresponding to them to to to, to this value 0 0.046. Yes, and we have approximately 0. Point, uh, sorry, not 0. Oh, 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 2.047. Yeah, and so on. And the last value in that column will be uh, will be twenty four point nine two eight. No, here twenty four point nine two eight, and the last one is is four. Point three two four. Yeah. So we have the column of the products. Yeah. Products of what? Of the middle of the classes and the relative frequencies. And in the last step, in the last step, we have the sum of the products. So we have to sum up that column. We have to sum up that column. Yes, and this sum gives us mean average year of uh, COVID victim. And the, this uh, sum is equal 72.784 yes yes because this is this is the unit of our variable this is the average covid victim age yeah is high of course because we know that the um, that uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus is the most dangerous to the oldest people yeah and as we could perceive in the previous version of the table young people in general are much more resistant to the virus than the older people and they pass uh, the disease uh, some uh, symptomatically yeah so we see that the average uh, the average yes this is the interpretation the interpretation the average age of COVID-19 victim in Poland 
is about 73 years. It's about 73 years. And this is the end of this sad example. next exercise the corpo company collected data about employees gross wages in september 2020 in polish zloty the results were as follows yes we had how many one two three four five six six intervals of wages yes mm. they are separated yeah so there is no problem with the same values and uh, here we have the number of the employees that uh, are characterized by the particular uh, interval of wages and we have to estimate and interpret the average gross salary in the corpo company Com fake of course company yeah so here we have number of employees so now we are dealing with frequencies as you remember earlier we had relative frequencies now we have the frequencies here we have, for example, our, uh, our um, variable, we can uh, use here annotation xi, yeah, in Zlotis, and now let's move to the computation of mean average salary, yes? It's very useful information, yeah? People have differentiated salaries yeah monthly salaries we are trying to um, obtain a uh, synthetic information about the salaries in the firm a typical level an average level yeah it's very important information maybe who those who are trying to apply to have a uh, to hire in this field yeah so, mean here in the interval series using frequencies, the formula is following. The sum from i equal one up to how many, uh, how many, how many intervals we have? Six. From i equal one up to six of the middle of the classes multiplied by n i's which uh, can be treated here as wages weights weights sorry wages here we have wages here we have weights yeah do you, uh, 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 please remind yourself the idea of weighted mean and divided by the sum of weights in statistical terms the population size so, we need the middle of the classes in the first step, yeah? So, we are going inside the formula. Inside the formula, we found uh, xi with a circle, which represents the middle of the classes. Let's start compute the middle of the classes. In the first class, the middle of the class is 3000, yeah? Okay, the next one, 5,000.5. Here we have what? 7,000.5, and here we have 16,000.5. Uh, no, uh, 0.5 yeah 
to ensure a better understanding I had computed all the values. And in the next step we need what? We need what? The product. The product of the middle of the classes and frequencies. The product of the middle of the classes and frequencies. So now in this column uh, we're going to uh, multiply x i's by n i's. Yeah? So here in the first row we have 3000 multiplied by 321. Yes, and the result is, oh, it's a huge number, uh, nine, uh, 900. 63,000 yeah in the second in the second row we have 5000.5 multiplied by four, uh, 457 and the result is and the result is 2 millions 285,000 229 yeah of course in your uh, notebooks you uh, you write only the final results yeah so the next numbers are following Two hundred seven, two million, three, one zero, one zero five, and one three nine two zero four four. Yeah. So we have all the results. So uh, now we have to compute the sum of of all the values from that column so the sum of the products yeah and the sum of the products the sum of the products is equal 14 million nine hundred fifty eight thousand eight hundred ninety yeah okay so we can start our computations and we have what in the denominator 14 million blah 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 of course it is expressed in PLN in Polish Lotus yeah because um, um, uh, number of, of employees has no unit so uh, the only thing that have a unit is um, uh, the middle of the class divided by the population size oh yeah we need the population size the population size is the sum of the column with uh, with frequencies and how many people uh, uh, how many employees work in this firm? 2,101 2,101 Yes, this is the population size This is the sum of that column Please check it out Do it individually at home uh, Okay So we divide the nominator, nominator by the denominator and we have and we have six thousand one hundred nineteen dot eight nine of course Polish zones this is the average gross wage in this firm in this company yeah 
So we have a uh, one synthetic homogeneous information about the wages in this firm. Yes? An average wage, gross wage in this firm is about 7120 zlotys. Yes? And we can write it down. Average gross wage in this company is about 7120 slots. Of course, we have we have employees who earn more than average and we have some uh, workers than, uh, that uh, earn uh, less money than the average, yeah? By on average, the average salary, the, the typical salary is the, in this firm is about 7,120. All right, we can start the last example connected with the mm, arithmetic mean, in which John International, a student of business and finance management, after first year of his learning, wants to compute a weighted average grade. Remind yourself the presentation content about uh, about average. Uh, about uh, weighted uh, mean, yeah. In order to apply for a scholarship, he complied appropriate data in related to a point series. Yeah, and in what we can, what we see uh, in the um, table, we have a um, uh, specific curve here. Uh, the grade, the final grade from the course. So this is our variable, yeah. Uh, variable grade and its values, five, four point five, the values of our variable, and kind of unique situation because here, uh, relative, uh, sorry, simply, frequencies, frequencies uh, are named here by ECTS points yeah so this is a, a kind of unique situation but it shows uh, it shows that we can uh, use the formulas from the statistic from from statistics in simple combination of the weighted mean okay one more thing here we see that uh, from both course courses derivatives and ethics we have four yeah so we can aggregate these two courses into one course yes because here we have the same values and we ha we can sum up sum up the weights or uh, the weights from these these both courses Yes, and we have done it here. Now we are able to compute simple weighted mean. Here we have rated to point uh, statistical series. Yes, we, we know all the values of our variable. Yes, all the values of our variable is known here. And we know the weights. Um, or in other words, we know the frequencies, so we can compute mean rate. So as you can see, in the first step, we are trying to uh, trying to estimate uh, the product of uh, the uh, the um, values of our attribute and um, ECTS points. Yes, so here we multiply in grade by 
SCTS points. And what we have here, what we have here, 5 by 8 gives us 40, yeah? Four um, point half by twelve is fifty four. Yeah, and after that we have what sixteen multiplied by four, sixty by two is thirty two, so sixty four, and here we have fourteen. Yeah, three point five multiplied by four. Yeah, and the sum and the sum of um, if we have the column of xi multiplied by ni's, yeah, the product of uh, grades and ECTS points. Now we have to sum up that column, yeah, in order to obtain this sum in the nominator. So what we have here, 40 plus 54 is 94, plus 60, and 64 is 158, and finally we have 172, yeah, so our mean is equal to the sum from i equal 1 up to 4 yes because here we have 4 points xi multiplied by ni divided by n and the partial results are 172 yeah divided by uh, divided by uh, 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 the sum of the ECTS points here we have what? 8 plus 12, 20 plus 20, 40. 40 is a TS point. Yes, so finally the final grade, the final grade will be, I need a calculator, the final average grade is 3.4.3. Four point three is the average weighted mean. Yeah. So as you remember, yes, here we have the biggest uh, weight. Yeah. So um, fourth is the strongest value. Yeah. So it pull the average value to uh, to the its side. Yeah. So, if we have here a massive weight, yes, so we know somewhere around this value is placed our, our average value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's all for today. Thank you very much. Practice statistics. Keep calm and see ya.